Oh, welcome back everyone for another endgame focus build for this season. Today we're taking a dive towards Roy 3.0 to show you why it's still great and probably better than Sir 3.0 overall, but mainly because the build I have to show will make doing Grandmasters a lot more easier this time. We have two GMs I know people will struggle with, which are Corrupted and Inside Terminus, and you want every bit of protection that your tank protector is thrown at you. This Void Heart of Image like build will not only allow you to have non stop overshields for extra protection, but can help turn the tide when everything is lost. This is the best Titan build for Grandmasters you'll want if you want to get the Conqueror title this season. But you know what else will conquer Destiny and this sub? This channel right here. So if you enjoy the content, then do leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications as it really does help me out. So starting off with the subclass, we will be running with Descent or Shield and Bubble as two options available to use if you want to stay mobile or stay in one place. This will vary from content to content. Although we have done a build like this in the past, a lot of fragments and items used this time have changed so it can fit within the theme of Endgame better. Our focus is to use Half Image Light as much as we can so that our grenades, class ability and midi all get equal chance of use and everything comes back stronger. With how I've set it up, you'll always have your barricades available to start the interaction and then go from there. So for aspects, we have Bastion, where casting your super will grant allies overshields. It will also make your barricade produce overshields and regen lost shielding over time. Next, we have offensive bulwark aspect, as this will provide us an increase in grenade recharge time, increased melee damage and range, melee final blows extend overshields, and will also grant two extra shield throws while in the super. For Fragments, we have Echo Remnants, where our grenades have increased duration effect, Echo Explosion, where Void Ability Finder Blows will cause targets to explode, and Echo of Undermining, where grenades weaken targets by 15%. For Stats, you want 90 to 100 Resilience, 18 Discipline, and 30 to 15 Strength. Now, you always want to make sure your Resilience is the highest stat to invest in, so you can activate your Exotic within seconds. After that, you can then invest into Discipline or Strength, depending on what you want the most out of. For key mods now, you want to have Frontal Wisdom for a plus 15 intellect boost, Mini Wellmaker for creating worlds via mini kills, Reaper Wellmaker for creating worlds via using your class ability and then getting a kill after, Elemental Ordnance for creating worlds via grenades, and lastly, I have Solar Formation where your ignitions do more damage and Revitalizing Blast where stunning a champion will cause them to ignite. Adding everything together creates a simple but highly effective loadout that is capable of absorbing damage and dishing it back out again against ranking file to endgame bosses. This is how you can create an endgame build that is both flexible and useful wherever you go, and just the sheer power of Roy 3.0 can do a lot of wonders compared to other subclasses available. So now this leads us to the weapons, which will vary to users. However, there is a set of weapons you should stick with if you want the best success in the game. For starters, I have Arbalist as my primary, as it's a great weapon to carry when breaking barrier shields and elemental ones as well. You can do so much with just this weapon alone, which allows you to freely use whatever secondary or heavy you like, no matter what element you use. On top of that, it's a linear weapon, so it's going to have a higher precision damage, which can be enough to take out a barrier, overload or unstoppable, if all your shots connect. You should always have this weapon spare as it will free up gear and cover you from start to finish. Now, alternatively, the new Dungeon Pulse is also good as it can get adaptive munitions, something that can help with taking down shields a bit easier as well. For a secondary, we have Aisha's Embrace, which is a trials weapon and has unrelenting and Dejo. The following role is great as it not only allows you to get your health back after a number of kills are made, but also change the rate of fire after a kill, which will increase damage for a few seconds. This may sound bad at first, as a slow fire rate means more shots will be needed, but this actually makes the weapon a whole lot better in terms of taking out rank and fire within a few shots. Having your crits go from 1,900 to 2,469, which is around a 26% damage increasement, is something that's going to be really useful against these types of red bars. You can of course try and get a version with Warpool instead, as it will become even more effective against mages and bosses, but this will be down to you. For heavy, we have the Comoration Heavy Machine Gun with Reconstruction and Eye of the Storm. Although it's more of a PvP weapon with how it feels and its perks, it's quite relatively good in PvE with taking down Major to Ultra Health quickly. As you know, Machine Guns have been given a big buff to their damage, so they can keep up with everything else, and although not many talk about it, they feel a lot more stronger compared to how they felt before. By stunning a champion for example, my Machine Guns should be enough to get them down to half or quarter health left over, and this can be effective against bosses as well. 
If there is a void button active as well, such as on inside terminus, then this will be a dream for having loads of ammo available. Of course, if machine guns aren't your thing, then any rocket is fine to use, but I recommend you give machine guns a try this season. For stats, we have three key areas to look at because of how hard it most likely requires us to use it. We have discipline, strength, and resilience. All but strength are at good levels to where we can use the fast ability regen at our advantage. You'll always want to have one ability as the highest stat to start off with and make that start the key one you'll be using all the time. From shown, you can see that my resilience is the highest at 90 and will act as the catalyst to trigger in the mass cooldown from here on out. I have tested this stat a number of times to see if the cooldown rate is fine and it doesn't need any more support and as long as you collect the elemental well and use your abilities wisely, you won't need to add on any additional mods to make it better. Of course, Distribution, Absolution and Utility Kickstart are great mods to use if you want that extra bit on the side. You've then got Discipline which is at 80 and once again doesn't need further support if you use your abilities wisely. The reason why nothing more is added is because of how it is light should be enough to support this one area, but also because we'll be using an offensive bulwark which will be granting us increased grenade regen over time as well just from simply having our overshows on. You can guess where this is going and see why no additional mods are then required. You'll then lastly you have your strength stat which is at 30, and to be fair, this one won't be used too much as it's not that effective at netting kills like grenades, or being effective like barricades. Its use is to further support your other abilities and that's really it. Now to make sure it's being used as much as possible, we have got Harmonic Siphon times 2 so we can create orbs of power on kills, and the Invigoration mods to decrease the cooldown rate of a melee. That should be it, and you should not expand further unless you have the room to do so. Now left over wise, we only have got the Machine Gun Scavenger mod for increased machine gun ammo, which is all you'll really need for the weapon. Now here are the mods compiled into one to make it easier for you to take notes on. For head we have resilience, harmonic siphon times two and frontal wisdom mod. Arm we have discipline and melee wellmaker mod. Chest we have discipline, thermal shot plating, concussive damner and reaping wellmaker mod. Leg we have mind resilience, machine gun scavenger, invigoration and elemental owners mod. Mark we have resilience, revitalize and blast and solar formation mod. With Heart of Inmost Light and Void 3.0, it's become one of the most reliable builds to use if you want quick, straight to the point, and very powerful setup until the end of times. As presented, the build has rapidly fast cooldown, allowing users to get the right amount of energy back and constantly feed back into having an overshoot of demand. The fragments and artifacts chosen are designed for increasing our damage further via our abilities and making it safe to play a bit more aggressive than usual for a Grandmaster. I've given this a try in 2GM just to see how well it is, and just from trying it out in one or nothing, it provided me with adequate protection and allowed me to survive most one shot hits from certain ultras to majors. Damage was good and didn't struggle with standing my ground. In Inside Terminus now, it was the same all the way up to the boss which for many is where the issue stopped. Funny enough, this went as smoothly as you would expect and had no trouble against bosses this time round. Plenty of overshields were available and damage was okay and generally not too bad. Of course, the only issue we had was the plate section, but of course having the bubble really made that encounter much more easier to complete. I then went on testing it in other content as well and it overall impressed me with its survivability. You could take out the mods and change the weapons, but the core of the build will always stay the same, which would mean a lot for those that don't have specific items available. It's a fairly well created build with the issues of faults I can think of that made it an issue. We could improve some stats here and there, but that's more of a personal choice. If you want to do GMs in a relatively safe manner and get the Conqueror title, then this is the build you want to take with you as it has everything you need to survive just that. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with new changes. Once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.